the magic of cause and effect. One day I ask a beggar, why are you sitting with a long face? His face became longer. He said, what do you mean? I am sitting here since morning. I have not got any dollar. I haven't eaten any food. How do you want me to be not having a long face? How do you want me to thank God? And what? why should I thank him and for what? What has he given me? I am a beggar. Such is the situation of each one of us. We look for the cause and without a cause, how can you be happy? Cause comes first and effect follows. This is what we know in our general day-to-day -day language. But the mystics and the masters follow the other route. There are two things, cause and effect. Normally cause comes first and effect follows. You have won lottery, you are happy. Someone is sick, you are unhappy. This is what you know and you live by. However, you can reverse the process. The cause is not in your hand. Winning a lottery or getting a job or something that will make you happy is not in your hand. But there is something that is in your hand. You can create the effect first and then the cause will follow. The cause is beyond you, but the effect is with you and within you. The cause is in the surroundings, in the situation, the cause is without. The effect is you, effect is within. Certainly you can create the effect it is in your hands. And if you succeed in creating the effect, you are creating a milieu for the cause to happen. There is an intrinsic, there is an intrinsic relationship between the two. One follows the other. It is up to you from where you want to begin. Masters, Nakshbandi Sheikh, Sufi Shakuntala Devi always used to bless the people who will bow down to her by saying, be always happy. Be always happy is an effect. She is trying to create the effect in you first. The cause will follow. I have heard about a learned Brahman and mystic his name was Chanakya. He lived between 350 to 275 BC. He was an Indian teacher, philosopher, economist, jurist and royal advisor. He is traditionally known as Kautilya or Vishnu Gupta. He authored the great Indian political treaties known as Arthashastra or economics. As such, he is considered the pioneer in the field of political science and economics. His work is considered as an important milestone in that field. Originally, he was a teacher at the ancient university of Takshila. That's the ancient Buddhist universities that came to be known as the seat of education. Chanakya assisted the first emperor of the Mauryan dynasty, dynasty Chandragupta, to rise to power. He played an important role in the establishment of Maurya dynasty. The story goes on like this, Chanakya worked in the court of the king 
of king called Nand. Chanakya was not treated in the court well. He was insulted. And this prompted Chanakya to swear revenge and destroy the empire. Insulted at the court, Chanakya untied his hair lock and swore that he would not tie it back until he has destroyed the kingdom. Now Chanakya was searching for one worthy successor who could succeed the kingdom and he found a young boy who was playing with his friends the game of kingdom. He was a poor boy. He was playing the game that he is the king sitting on the throne and he is commanding his friends as ministers. Chanakya watched this and he was very impressed with the boy and decided to groom him for the king. What this boy was doing, he was creating an effect. Creating an effect, there was no cause for him to be the king. He was not the king, an ordinary boy. But he was playing the game that he is the king. He is sitting on the throne and commanding his friends who were acting as ministers. Chanakya was very much impressed with the courage and capacity of this boy. He decided to groom him. And with the help of some allies, Chanakya and Chandragupta brought down the entire empire, often using manipulative and secretive means. Thus, he created the effect first because he was confident that this boy has the capacity and he will succeed one day as king if given proper training. This boy has already created an effect by being an emperor and thus there was no waiting. The magic began to happen. From the very moment Chanakya met this boy, he has already created the magic that there is no need to wait. Normally one has to wait if the kingdom has to come first, the cause has to come first. There is no need to wait to create the effect. You can be an emperor this very moment. The moment you start looking at the bounties that you have been showered with. You have been showered with bounties but you are looking in your own way. Beggar. Looking for this, looking for that and in that pursuit we have forgotten what we have gotten in our hands. Nakshbandi Sheikh Chachaji used to say he was a simple man, not an intellectual. His ways and means were very simple. He used the ordinary language. He used to say Juttal Khele Satchal Hoi. Juttal means false. You are playing the game of falsehood. Means you are pretending. What one pretends oneself to be certainly becomes that. I recall when I was a student in my class, there was a boy who used to stammer. So whenever we see him, we used to imitate and this used to irritate him. But one day while imitating him, realize that something of that stammering began to happen to me. If you pretend that you are mad, one day you will certainly become mad. Juttal khele, when you place the game that like this boy, what he was doing, he was not a king, not an emperor. But he was playing the game that he is an emperor. Something that he was pretending that he is an emperor. 
and sometimes when the little children play the game they say pretend that i am the emperor or i am the father and you are the mother and we are playing the game of father and mother that is a game ultimately one becomes that and if someone plays the game of truth certainly it will bring the solution of all that is duality play the game of pretension even if if that be false one one day certainly you will attain to that and one who plays the game of truth certainly all dualities will vanish and you will enter a new domain of knowing and being just be whatsoever you want to be slowly and slowly an inner change will begin to happen and then the process of transformation will begin be the emperor feel as an emperor and see the kingdom follows this is the secret of transformation but no one dares this you would have heard the name of a chinese mystic called gote or popularly known as laughing buddha some buddhist tradition consider him as a buddha or bodhisattva often identify him with maitri maitri means friend the future buddha his identification with maitri is attributed to a buddhist hymn he uttered just before he died maitri the true friend has billions of incarnations often he is shown to people at the time other times they do not recognize him. in the folklore it is admitted he is accepted for his happiness plenitude and wisdom of contentment one popular belief in folklore maintains that rubbing his belly brings wealth good luck and prosperity there are many versions of this statue of love in buddha he used to carry a sack at his back we see many different versions of it in japan he is known as hote and this persists in the folklore as one of the seven lucky gods statues of laughing buddha from a central part of icon tau shrine where is usually referred to by his sanskrit name maitri this is in japan according to icon tau he represents many teachings including contentment generosity wisdom and open kind heartedness how many of us have this he is predicted to succeed gautam buddha as the next buddha and helps people to realize the essence within which connects with all the beings the primary story that concerns laughing buddha is a short quote in it he is said to be traveling giving candies to poor children and used to ask only for a penny from zen monks or the lay practitioners he meets one day a monk walks up to him and says what is the meaning of zen hote dropped his back how does one realize zen he dropped his back next moment he picked up his back and began to walk whatsoever you have you want to hold on you consider this as your position but he showed 
Someone asked what is Zen. He dropped his back, unconcerned. This does not belong to me. Even if you have to give your old clothes to someone, you will take out from the cupboard, look at it, fold it to be given, then you put it back in the cupboard. Many times, the same clothes that you want to give goes back in your cupboards. There is no generosity. He dropped the bag and next moment he picked up the bag and continued his way. He used to go to the marketplace and very often raise his hands and will begin to laugh. People will gather and seeing him in such a belly laugh, they would start laughing. As soon as the place, and soon the place will explode into a pool of laughter. The energy is transformed. The sad will begin to feel something of the beyond within. His contentment, his generosity, his certitude, and all that he is begin to manifest and become part of the people. Even those who were sad, used to feel happy in his company and as soon as the crowd has burst and has become a pool of laughter he will move to another place and this is what he did throughout his life he is recognized as a laughing buddha normally we feel happy for some reason if i ask a beggar to be happy he will refuse he needs a cause to be happy. If I ask you to be happy, you want to know why should I be happy? I haven't got my book published. I do not have this, I do not have that. God has always deprived me at the last moment. I was almost on the verge of getting the job, but the last, last minute I lost the job. How do you want me to be happy? Why should he feel happy he has not won a lottery or any other laurel? It is impossible to be happy without a reason. Everyone wants the cause first and then he can be happy. There is certainly another way. Create the effect first and this you can do because it is in your hand. You can be happy this very moment or you can be unhappy. But the cause certainly is not in your hands. It is in your hand. But for this you need to have a different kind of consciousness. You must have trust and contentment. A heart full of gratitude. A heart that can feel the grace moment to moment. A heart full of awareness. And with awareness, understanding and contentment comes. Someone asks, how can one connect to an enlightened one and can connect to a master? There are three ways. One is the way of heart. The other is the way of philosopher. And the way of a learned one. The best the master lives in a domain beyond time and space. He looks like you, but his understanding is totally different. He speaks a language which you cannot understand. He creates the music around him. The best way is to connect through the heart. And in order to connect to the master through the heart, you don't need anything, just a loving heart. A heart that is full of contentment, a heart that is trusting. And you are bridged to the master. Whatever he is, begin to flow towards you. A heart that can feel the grace moment to moment. A heart full of awareness. And with awareness, understanding and contentment comes. 
and once you are capable of creating the effect, the cause will happen on its own. The existence will feel a commitment to create the cause for you. All the forces will begin to work in your support. However, this requires great courage and understanding. Look at the child. He has not won any prize or degree or honors, but he is always happy. He is happy because his consciousness is not yet contaminated. He is like fresh breeze from the existence. He can still feel the freshness. As you grow old, you lose this connection. Complaints remain the way of your life. Instead of gratitude, there remains complaints on your lips. Complaints for this or that. A sad face always follow wherever you go. You are asked to do something. Always you are negative about that and doubtful for its happening. There is a Hindi problem. You are asked to do something, you went crying and you return with the news that the man has passed away. The Hindi proverb says, Rote hue gaye aur mare ki khabar le ke aaye. Means you go on crying that this will not happen. This will certainly not happen and you come back that it did not happen and then you will Ascertain your point that I told you this will not happen. You begin your begin to doubt your capabilities. You are asked to do something. Always you are negative about that and doubtful of its happening. You begin to doubt your own capabilities. If I ask you to do something, you are always negative about that or its fruition. I have known this through my own experience. I am not talking to you about a theory or a doctrine. Be happy and in that peak of happiness you will see the whole existence reciprocates your happiness. You will find the entire existence, the birds, the trees, the rivers, the mountains, all dancing in ecstasy. And this is contagious. There is an old saying, laugh and the world laughs with you. Cry and you cry alone. Even the trees, the rocks, the sand, the clouds. If you can create the effect and be ecstatic, they will all dance with you. Then the whole existence becomes a dance and celebration. The purpose of a spiritual life is to become a dance, celebration. It all depends on you. You will have to create the effect first and allow the magic to follow. And I say to you, you can create this. It is the easiest thing possible. It looks very difficult because you have not tried it as yet. Give it a try. It is easier to create the effect because the effect totally depends upon you. The cause may or may not be dependent on you entirely. I will tell you one of the deepest laws of life. You may not have thought about this at all. You have heard the whole science depends on it. That cause and effect is, is the base. You create the cause, the effect follows. Life is a causal link. You put the seed in the soil and it will sprout. If the cause is there, then the tree will follow. The fire is there. You put your hand in it and it will burn. The cause is there and the effect will fall. You take poison and you will die. 
you arrange for the cause and then effect follows. This is one of the fundamental scientific laws. The cause and effect is the innermost link of all processes of life. But religion knows about a second law which is deeper than this. But the second law which is deeper than this will look absurd to you, to your intellect. If you do not follow it and do not experiment with it, religion says produce the effect, the cause will follow. This is absolutely absurd in scientific terms. Science says cause comes first, the effect follows. Religion says the opposite is also true. Create the effect and see what follows. There is a situation in which you feel happy. A friend has come, a beloved has called. A situation is the cause, you feel happy. Happiness is the effect. The coming of the beloved is the cause. Religion says be happy and the beloved will come. Create the effect, the cause will follow. It is my own experience that the second law is more basic than the first. I have always been doing this and it has been happening. Just be happy, the beloved comes. Just be happy, the friends are there. Just be happy, everything follows. In simple words, it implies you to create the milieu. By being happy, what are you doing? You are creating a milieu. You are creating an energy field. That milieu, that energy field will attract the cause to happen. This is my certitude and my life, my being is a testimony to it. Jesus says the same thing in different words. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and then all else will follow. But the kingdom of God is the end, the effect. Seek ye first the end. End means the effect, the result and cause will follow. It is as if you should be. It is not only that you place a seed in the soil, the tree will follow. Let there be a tree and there are millions of seeds. If the cause is followed by the effect, the effect is again followed by the cause. This is a chain. Then it becomes a circle. Start from anywhere. Create the cause or create the effect. I tell you, it is easier to create the effect because effect depends totally on you. Certainly the cause will not depend on you. If I say, I can only be happy if a certain friend is there, then it depends on a certain friend. Whenever he is, whether he is there or not, if I say I cannot be happy until I attain this much wealth, then it depends on the whole world and the economic situation and everything else. It may not happen. And then in that situation I can never be happy. Cause is beyond you. The effect is within you. Cause is in the surrounding, in the situation. The cause is without, the effect is you. If you can create the effect, the cause will follow. Nakshwandi Sheikh Shakuntala Devi always used to tell the seekers to always choose to be happy. It is your choice. Whenever any circumstance and situation comes, you have a choice to be happy or not to be happy. 
This was her blessing to anyone who sought her blessings. Once I say choose happiness, when I say choose happiness, it implies you are choosing the effect and then see what happens. Choose ecstasy and see what happens. Choose to be blissful and see what happens. Your whole life will change immediately and you will see the miracles happening around you. The flowers showering, even without the season, because now you have created the effect, the cause will have to follow. This will look magical. You can call it even the law of magic. The first is the law of science. And the second is the law of magic. Religion is magic. And you can be the magician to create the effect. That is what I teach you to be a magician. To know the secret, the art of creating the magic. Try it. You have been trying the other your whole life. Not only this, but many other lives as well. Now listen to me. Try this magic formula. This mantra I give it to you. Create the effect and see what happens. Cause immediately surrounds you. They follow. Do not wait for the cause. You have waited for long enough. Choose happiness and you will be happy. What is the problem? Why can't you choose? Why can't you work on this law? Because your mind, the whole mind which has been trained by scientific thinking, says that if you are not happy and you try to be happy, that happiness will be artificial, fake. If you are not happy and you try to be happy, then it will be just acting. This will not be real. This is what scientific thinking says that will not be real and you will be just acting. But you do not know. Life energy has its own way of working. If you can create and act totally, I mean totally. This is what Buddha said. Awareness means to be total in whatever you are doing. If you can act totally, it will become real. The only thing is this. The actor must not be there. Let there be an acting. Move totally into it. Then there is no difference. If you are acting half-heartedly, then it will remain artificial. In the moment when you are totally into it, the actor disappears, only the action remains. That is why I keep on telling you, do whatsoever you are doing. Do it meditatively, be totally into it. Whether you are walking on the street, eating, cooking, making love or doing anything. I say to you, dance and sing and be blissful. And you, but... Whatsoever you do, you do it half-heartedly. Just remain, just see what happens. But you remain behind. You go on thinking that this is just artificial. I am trying this but nothing is coming. This is not spontaneous. Then it will remain acting a waste of time. Be spontaneous. If you try, then try it wholeheartedly. Be spontaneous. Do not remain behind. Move into it. Become the acting. Dissolve the actor into acting and then see what happens. It will become real and then you will feel it is spontaneous. You have not done it. You have not known that it has happened. You have not known that it can happen. 
but certainly you will know that it has happened. But unless you are total, it cannot happen. Create the effect. Be in it completely. See and observe the result. I can make you kings without kingdoms. Only you have to learn to act like kings and act so total that before you even the real king will appear as if he is just acting. And when the whole energy has moved into it, it becomes a reality. Energy makes anything real. If you are, what matters really, are you totally into it or half-heartedly? If you wait for kingdom, they never come. Even for a Napoleon or for an Alexander who had big kingdoms, they never came. They remain miserable because they did not come to realize the second, the more basic, the primal law of life. Alexander was trying to create a bigger kingdom to become a bigger king. It is said when Alexander was going to invade the east, he passed through a river. There was a naked saint called Diogenes. He asked him, about happiness. Alexander said, if I can make a kingdom bigger, I'll be happy. On his way back after the victory, he met again Diogenes. Alexander was thirsty. He asked a man, Diogenes, who are you? He said, I am the emperor. He said, but you are naked, you have nothing. How can you be an emperor? Conversation went. Alexander was thirsty. He didn't find the water anywhere. He said, can I get some water? Diogenes said, yes, I have water. But what are you going to give for the water? He said, anything that you ask because I'm thirsty. The conversation continued. Alexander was ready to give his entire kingdom for the water. He said, this is the value of your kingdom and my kingdom is so precious even for the entire wealth I will not give it to anyone. Alexander died as a beggar and Diogenes was the emperor, the real emperor. This is what has happened to many people. Kingdom can never be complete. The world is infinite. Your kingdom is bound to remain partial and if it is partial then how can you be a total king? Your kingdom is bound to remain limited with a limited king, with a limited kingdom. You cannot be the emperor, it is impossible. But you can be the emperor, just create the effect. Swami Ram, one of the mystics of this century. Swami Ram, one of the mystics of this century, went to America. He used to call himself Bhatshah Ram, Emperor Ram. And he was a beggar. Somebody said to him, you are just a beggar, but you are calling yourself the emperor. So Ram said, don't you look at my things, look at me. Do not look at my things, instead look at me. And he was right. Because if you look at the things, then everybody is a beggar, even an emperor. He may be a bigger beggar, that is all. When Ram said, look, look at me, in that moment, Ram was the emperor. If you looked, the emperor was there. Create the effect. Become the emperor. Be a magician. And from this very moment, because there is no need to wait. One has to wait if kingdom has to come first. 
If the cause has to be created first, then you will have to wait. And wait and wait and postpone. There is no need to wait. Just create the effect. And you will be the emperor this very moment. When I say be, just be the emperor and see the kingdom follows. I have known it through my experience. I am not talking to you about a theory or a doctrine. Be happy and in that peak of happiness, you will see the whole world is happy with you. There is an old saying, laugh. The world laughs with you. Cry and you cry alone. Even the trees, the rocks, the sand, the clouds. If you can create the effect and be ecstatic, they all will dance with you and the whole existence becomes a dance, a celebration, a benediction. But it all depends on you. If you can create the effect, I say to you, you can. It is the easiest thing possible, but it looks difficult. It looks difficult because you have not tried it yet. Give it a try. Begin by creating the effect. The cause will follow.